Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the many confusions that are running in the minds of those who claim to interpret the fossil record when it comes to the ape and human evolutionary process. Now, in what, what I'll do is I'll deconstruct what some well what the primary evolutionary belief is regarding this and then what we'll do is we'll also show what other evolutionary theories claim on their difference of opinion and we will even show that people such as Richard Dawkins um, where his claims upon his understanding of the theory uh, is also pretty confusing and not really preaching what the reality looks like. So let's begin. Now, if you go to a lot of the online videos about how is it that man evolved from an ape and so forth, they will show a picture of this. As you can see here, it's called the March of Progress. You know how they depict uh, a small monkey and then he's in the crouch position and he starts to slowly walk upright and eventually he starts to, you know, become like us modern human beings. Um, and uh, this image was produced many, many years ago. And what happened is uh, some of the evolutionary uh, Darwinists misinterpreted that and basically thought that's how the sequence actually occurred. And what they apparently misinterpreted is uh, um, people interpret it as implying linear progress and direction towards humans simply have the wrong end of the stick. So they if when they start interpreting it that way, that's not how it occurred. Uh, and the more correct interpretation apparently comes from Richard Dawkins, and we shall go to that in a short while. Uh, and here is another video, actually, if you can, uh, we'll actually open it up. And you can see in this video where they actually follow that same sort of mentality of March of Progress. Okay, so here you will see, uh, sorry, it took me a bit while to get to the, to the actual angle, but here, as you can see, you'll see the actual creature. It looks like some sort of a rodent or something. Uh, it climbs the tree, and look what happens. Okay, watch this bit. See how from a monkey sitting on a tree, it goes directly to a human being. Have a look. Oh, well, uh, it goes basically to the ancestry of, of a human being, to the same lineage. Have a look. Okay, see how... Okay, see how here the, um, the human being directly comes from something that is crawling and walking on a tree, which was a monkey, as we saw earlier. So basically, apparently, this idea is wrong according to Richard Dawkins, and we didn't evolve from chimpanzees and monkeys and things like this. Including the March of Progress image, uh, which is here, this is also wrong. It's crossed out, and they now represent it as the tree, as you can see, all these different monkeys 
on these different branches and then you have the human being the human being where he has his own independent branch he doesn't come from the same branches of those other other monkeys as you can see uh, uh, not the gorilla uh, or the chimpanzee uh, but it shows other extinct creatures here uh, just below that on the branch as you can see here so my question is and we'll go to Richard Dawkins video that if we didn't evolve from chimpanzees and monkeys and all these sorts of creatures well we still evolved from mon monkey looking creatures so I don't know why they're actually disputing the image the well the primary image which is the um, which is basically the march of progress image as you can see you have the monkey crawling and then he goes on goes on goes on and then it starts evolving into a man now it's interesting that they're now saying that's not how the sequence occurred um, but then when you actually go to the actual diagram what Richard Dawkins presents it ought to have come from that particular monkey as you can see here look can you see here have a look I mean it, it doesn't look that different from from the uh, chimpanzee let's have a look at an, uh, an image of a chimpanzee and we'll look at an image of this there you have it that is an image of uh, a chimpanzee and they're saying that no we, we didn't come from uh, creatures that look like chimpanzees but let's go to the actual original picture and where the correction is made but we still see a similar creature to this uh, on the actual diagram let's have a look okay so this is not apparently evolution there was a mistake it's not that sequence the original image apparently is supposed to look like this can you see these other small creatures here where the tree follows from below the branch the main strong branch here uh, you could still see uh, an in extinct creature uh, I think it's called Priscillus or something uh, and then there's Snappuscus you can see there's extinct creatures and they simply look exactly like um, uh, like, like chimpa chimpanzees and there's another one extinct one here uh, and he looks like that same figure that monkey up at the top the starting monkey up at the top uh, so it's it, it seems to me that they're saying oh we didn't evolve from monkeys and chimpanzees and things like that but then the branch does connect to a monkey chimpanzee looking creature let's listen to what Richard Dawkins says <laughs> People often ask me, if we're descended from chimpanzees, how come there are still chimpanzees? Well, we're not descended from chimpanzees. We're both descended from a common ancestor who lived there about six million years ago. That common ancestor then produced two branches, one of which went to us humans, and one of which went to chimpanzees, branching further to produce bonobos and common chimpanzees. We are all cousins. We are not descended from chimpanzees. But it, it, it's really strange when he says that. Notice when he points his finger to the, the area where he pointed, it doesn't show an image of that particular creature. And he says we're not evolved from chimpanzees and yaboos or whatever he said. But uh, he says we're not obviously direct descendants we're only cousins because they branched off to a different particular branch but eventually we would have still been related in the sense that we're still descendant from them you know it just means that we've just branched off and went alone different ways so for him to say oh we didn't come from chimpanzee or we didn't come from a monkey and so forth I'm sorry but th that particular creature is still part of our ancestry line. They went, they, they just basically directed, the traffic basically got directed to, to, to a different end. It doesn't mean that we didn't evolve from 
chimpanzees or or whatnot. But I mean, the primary example is this. The primary example is we still come from creatures. I mean, even if the atheists want to say, "Oh, look, you know, you know, you're wrong. Uh, we're not relate. We're not related from the same ancestry. Uh, uh, you know, we, we're only." Uh, related from a common perspective as a common ancestry we're not actually from chimpanzees because they shot off and went from their different branch okay fair enough let me accept that let me accept that but we still have evolved from creatures that resemble chimpanzees you can't even dispute that so then when we go back to the march of progress image then you know there's no point saying oh we didn't evolve from chimpanzees or monkeys yet we still produce images that resemble chimpanzees and monkeys chimpanzees more distantly related are gorillas they share a common ancestor with both us and chimpanzees that's the common ancestor see he again he points to He's going down further in the chart. He's saying, oh, look, human beings and gorillas aren't from one another. They share a common ancestor. But when, but why isn't he showing what the common ancestor looks like? So let's go and see what the common ancestor looks like, folks. Let's go and see what it looks like and what Mr. Dawkins is concealing. What the common ancestor looks like is something like this this is what uh this is what we the our sorry the ancestry of a human looks like it's homo habilis as you can see here but then if we go further down the chart this is what it apparently looks like okay so i'll draw on the diagram as you can see this is apparently the real image you can see and this is where the human being is can you see that branch there i've just marked it in red now if we go towards the left you can still see a monkey image here can you see this creature still looks a bit like orangutan and if you go further down as you can see here he still looks like a monkey so you know when this when they're saying oh we didn't evolve from uh you know these types of creatures if we didn't evolve from chimpanzee like this image here and we didn't evolve from gorilla but we evolved from this type of creature here in red then how is that any really any different? I mean, this creature which is extinct here, let me draw it again, this creature who is extinct here still resembles this creature here, the chimpanzee. It's very close to it. So, you know, for him, for Dawkins to say, oh, we didn't evolve from chimpanzees and things like that, well, so what? If you don't want to call it chimpanzee, we still evolved from monkey-looking creatures. But, of course, before we evolved from monkey-looking creatures, we were also this animal here, this creature here. But then again, right after that creature, or possibly many thousands of years after that creature, there was Homo habilis, as you can see here, and then that went on to become a human being. You know, it's interesting how they say oh, we didn't come from monkeys or chimpanzees and things like that, but the same atheists, Darwinists, evolutionists, and people like Mr. Dawkins argue that during our time before we became a man, as we started evolving and so forth, we lost our tails. We lost our tails. So if we lost our tails, then we would have ought to look something like, you know, a monkey and so forth. So it, it's, it seems odd that these people are saying, you know, the image of March of Progress is wrong. You know, this image here that they say, they say, oh, this doesn't represent uh, true 
belief of uh, Darwinian evolution regarding uh, the ape, as you can see here. And my, I'm asking the question, how is it wrong if this creature at the start, once upon a time, did have a tail? And he obviously lost his tail. And when he did have a tail, he obviously looked like a monkey. So when he lost his tail, he eventually went on to become a human being, as we've shown in the diagrams below. So how are they saying that this image here is a misrepresentation and that the correct view is more of the tree branchings. But then when you go to the tree branchings, you still see through the chain the same particular creature, you know. You know, I mean, you say it's not a chimpanzee, yet it still looks like the chimpanzees and so forth. So, I mean, it, you see, it seems that they, they're confused and they're just constantly playing this mind-shifting game. You know, changing their statements when it's convenient, when they get stuck, and then they keep, uh, you know, mixing it up with other images, yet it's basically all the same. Technically, anyway. You know, the image that we showed earlier, the ape, um, sorry, the March for of Progress, where he shows a smaller monkey uh, ape looking creature then evolving into a man and, and all that sort of stuff um, you know people there are paleontologists such as evolution evolutionary biologists and historians of science Stephen J Gold denounced the image in his 1989 book uh, wonderful life protesting that life is not a ladder of predictable progresses yeah, it amazes me when he says that when we see that same, that similar progress uh, down deep in the evolutionary tree. It's still there. So it seems that they're all getting it wrong. They're arguing and saying that depiction of apes is wrong. But then you go and study what Richard Dawkins says, and then you go deeper into it, and you see that technically he believes in that he just words it differently and then along the line you have all these different uh, internet evolutionists uh, who start making all these videos showing that we came from these monkeys and so forth so folks I, <laughs> you can see a clear confusion between this whole thing um, so in conclusion, folks, what we have is atheist Darwinist evolutionists misrepresenting their own science, yet they have the nerve to say theists have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to the understanding of evolution, and yet you have all these differences of opinions amongst these evolutionary bloggers. It's just amazing, isn't it? And more importantly, folks, this is the backbreaker, I believe. <laughs> you know, they say that ancient, uh, man came from this ancient creature, Homo habilis, uh, as you can see here. But when you tell them to show us then what came before the Homo habilis, right? And, of course, other evolutionists will show you images of, you know, rats, mice, whatever, um, you know, lizards and so forth. But there is no proof and evidence we actually evolved from those particular creatures. So it seems that there's now a gap because there's other evolutionists don't, that don't even want to comment on what came uh, before Homo habilis over here. Uh, it's basically like a missing link. So what they do suggest is that we came, well, Homo habilis came from this. And what is this? This is uh, Luca. This is the first, it's like a type of bacteria. Um, it's Luca. It's basically what all the life forms sprung out from. Uh, th the ancestry of man apparently originates from this, Luca. So, you know, these evolutionists like to claim, oh, evolution is a fact, folks. It's true. I mean, man has evolved from Luca eventually. This is the primary origin where man eventually came from. But then you tell an evolutionist, can you demonstrate in a science lab where you take Luca and you get Luca 
to magically perform all of these miracles where eventually all of these life forms spring out, Homo apelis appears, and then from Homo apelis, a human being then starts to shape and form. There is not a single practical example of that. And of course, an evolution will say, oh, you stupid theists don't understand evolution because evolution takes millions of years. Yet when you press them and say, well, if it takes a million years, it means that your theory cannot be proven through an observational lens. It, it basically can't. And all you can do is draw these images and take these skulls and bones and draw these falsified mask images on them. And the only place it comes to is Homo habilis. Fine, man evolved from Homo habilis. Let's agree with that. Well, where, what did Homo habilis evolve from? Can you, can you then demonstrate that? Can you demonstrate it that it came from Luca eventually? Can you show that? You can't even show that in a science lab. So how are we supposed to believe that the evolution of man occurred from Luca, that first organism, that living organism, and then it sprung onto man, when you can't demonstrate that because apparently it takes millions and millions and millions of years. Yet you want to shove down our throats that evolution, that man's evolution from Luca through Homo habilis actually occurred through natural processes. People often ask me, if we're descended from chimpanzees, how come there are still chimpanzees? Well, we're not descended from chimpanzees. We're both descended from a common ancestor who lived there about six million years ago. That common ancestor then produced two branches, one of which went to us humans, and one of which went to chimpanzees, branching further to produce bonobos and common chimpanzees. We are all cousins. We are not descended from chimpanzees. Yet the chimpanzee, the chimpanzee still looks like the image that he was basically sort of pointing to when you go below, lower down the chain. So, I mean, this guy is literally all over the place. Yeah, Mr. Dawkins, we're not direct descendants of chimpanzees, but for some reason, we've actually come from this particular creature here, as you can see. So, mm, yeah, we're not from chimpanzees and so forth, but we still come from something that looks like a chimpanzee. Amazing. And when you press them, apparently we came from Homo habilis, and we eventually came from Luca. What happened between Homo habilis and Luca? There were all these different types of creatures before we became human beings. So we would have come from things like lizards, maybe, rats, dogs. You don't know what was between Luca and Homo habilis. All these different types of creatures. So we eventually sprung from those creatures. Human ancestry sprung from those creatures. So the question is, can an evolutionist demonstrate from that particular Luca, this particular thing over here, this bacteria, that all these little other microorganisms and creatures emerged. I don't know whether you want to call it lizards, frogs, tadpoles, whatever. And then eventually became Hobo habilis here. And then eventually it became, became this figure here. Can you actually now demonstrate that in a science lab? No, you can't because it takes millions of years. But of course, the evolutionary theory is based on facts, evidences which they can't prove except in their fancy drawings. And the primary question is, so my question is, um, you know, if we lost our tail eventually, then why did we lose it? We obviously came from something that looks like a monkey. Again, the, uh, the march of progression has a creature in there that resembles a monkey and obviously one of those creatures in the march of race would have had a tail at some stage. So obviously they would have gone back to a monkey eventually. Yet, no, 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 we didn't evolve from chimps and monkeys. No, no, no. We evolved from something that looked like them. So folks, don't trust them when they keep 
drawing these images and then they cross them out to say that's not how it occurred, this is how it occurred. Don't trust them, just like they start shifting around their images and pictures and diagrams and so forth. Just how there's difference of opinion on different bloggers trying to present the theory of ape to man. And then that's apparently not exactly how it occurred, where man directly evolved from monkeys and things like that. Uh, and apes, it evolved, it had its own lineage, as Dawkins says. You have all these different ideas, okay? So this is what evolution is. It's just basically different ideas. He brings his evidence based on the fossil record. He brings his evidence, and they're just, you know, a manipulation, a misrepresentation. So, folks, don't believe what they say. Because there is no example in a practical science lab where you could take Luca and then start getting all of these creatures to emerge from it. It's not observable. It's not there. And this is just guesswork. Don't believe in it. Uh, there is no real evidence on it except in the imagination of these evolutionists that constantly contradict one another. Thank you.